Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. In terms of props for today, you can totally fly propless. If you do have injuries or limitations, you might want to have a couple of tools on hand. It could be good to have um, a blanket or a pillow to have underneath your knees anytime we are on our knees. It could also be good to have access to two blocks or thick hardcover books to have underneath your hands in case you have sensitive wrists. These are just optional. Keeping it simple, really all you need is yourself, your presence, a hard surface on which to practice, and we'll be good to go. Shabbat Shalom and welcome. We are going to get started. Um, welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. If we haven't met either in person or uh, by phone or online, my name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being Open Temple's executive director and also our resident yoga instructor. It's great to see you. To get us started and to stay grounded, please join me in taking a deep inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Again, inhale and exhale. There's a part of the Jewish tradition that there is a tefillah, a bracha that we recite in the morning. Modeani lefanacha melachai v'kayam shehachazarta binishmati, giving thanks and gratitude for waking up each day and for the restoration of our souls. I'm certainly feeling that this morning. It's good to be here with all of you. If you are joining us for the first time, or if it's been a while, um, we're claiming several months to look at how the practice of yoga intersects with an element of Jewish tradition called Musar. Musar is essentially translated as ethical behavior. It's a set, set of measurements um, through which we can set our moral compass. And there is an idea in the practice of Musar that there is a range of soul traits that we can embody and focus on one at a time that can really help us to set that moral compass. And so each week in this yoga studio, we're looking at one soul trait at a time, seeing how it plays out on this yoga mat how we embody it and how we can carry it forward into our day and into our lives. We've looked at soul traits like humility, patience, gratitude, compassion, order, equanimity. And today the soul trait is simplicity, but I wanna take a, a step back or forward depending on how you look at it and look for a moment at the Hebrew word for the soul trait and a Sanskrit word for this soul trait. And in Hebrew, the word is histakput, which comes from the root of sipuk, which is satisfaction. It's a type of contentment. And the idea is that in keeping things simple and paring it down, we have an opportunity to find satisfaction and contentment with our given circumstances. That's in Hebrew and in the tradition of Judaism. In the tradition of yoga, there is a term called santosha. Santosha is one of the niyamas. In the tradition of yoga, there are many types of practices. The asana practice is the physical practice. It's what we most commonly associate with yoga, and we are going to flow through a set of physical poses, but just as important as the asanas, as the physical practices, are other types of disciplines and self-restraints, and one of those is santosha. San means entirely or completely, and tosha means satisfied or satisfaction. So here we have this parallel, this entire complete satisfaction in our being. 
And that is what I'd like us to dedicate our practice towards exploring and discovering a sense of satisfaction and contentment. With that landscape set, please lie down on your back. I'm gonna start in a Shavasana, in a resting pose. So lie down, extend your arms alongside your torso, palms facing up. Let your ankles roll open. And let's take several cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. It might help you to feel grounded and focused to place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest so that you can feel the sensation of the inhale and the exhale in your body. With each inhale, you draw air and oxygen, life and energy in through your nose, down through your throat, filling your lungs, expanding your chest, and you might feel the rise of your chest into your palms. And the exhale is a release. It's the letting go, the letting go of the distractions, the other items on your to-do list for the day, just release them to be present here and now. Take another inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. If your eyes were closed, flutter them open. Return your arms alongside your torso, fingertips pointed towards the front of the room. And your ankles were rolled open. Now roll them back in towards the center line. Reach your toes up to the ceiling and imagine that you could stamp your feet on the wall in front of you. So we're in essentially a supine, a laying down tadasana, a laying down mountain pose. And inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other. And as you exhale, lower your arms towards the back of the room. Palms continue to face in towards each other. And inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, arms come down alongside your torso. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, arms up, just moving very slowly with intention. And start your exhale as your arms descend in back of you towards the back of your room. And for some of us, our arms might come completely down to the ground. Others, you might start stop halfway or two thirds way down. Do you inhale arms up and switch to your exhale as your arms start to fall down alongside your torso. We're going to add on inhale arms up. Let your arms descend towards the back of the room. Take your right hand, grab onto your left elbow. Take your left hand and grab onto your right elbow. And now start to pull your left elbow over to the right. Let your feet come over to the right. And begin to feel the stretch in the left side of your body. Focus your attention on your left hip, 
Feel a line of energy building from your left hip up through the left side of your torso to your left shoulder. Take one more inhale and exhale. Come back to the center. Bring your feet back to the center and second side. Inhale as you start to pull your right elbow over to the left. Swivel your feet over to the left and feel how that ignites a little bit of energy and heat in the right side of your torso. And just like before, trace that line of energy starting at your right hip, traveling up through the right side of your torso to your right shoulder. Take one more inhale and exhale. Return your arms and head to the center. Bring your feet back to the center and inhale, extend your arms towards the back of the room. Inhale, grow longer through your right leg. Imagine that your right foot is extending further towards the front of the room. And then elongate through the right side of your torso towards the back of the room, which lifts your right shoulder and in a go-go gadget arm manner, you're reaching that arm towards the back of the room. Exhale, relax, let your shoulder fall back into place. And now inhale, let's work on our left side. So extend your left leg further towards the front of the room. Go, go gadget leg. Start to elongate, lengthen through the left side of your torso. Feel how that lifts your left shoulder and arm further towards the back of the room. And then exhale, release. And now imagine that there is a cherry tree in back of you and start to lengthen through the right side of your torso, which extends your right arm further back. Imagine that you're picking cherries off the tree. Bring that right side back in, extend your left side, grab with your hand onto those cherries and just side by side, elongate. We're working on our side bodies today. Take one more cycle of breath. Willing to bet that you've never picked a cherry tree while lying down on your back. First time for everything. And now inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling and let your arms descend alongside your body. Inhale to draw your knees into your chest. Shift your hips over to the right edge of the mat. Let your knees fall over to the left side of the room and extend your right arm out towards the right. Turn your gaze over to the right. Use your left hand to grab onto your top knee. Hug it in. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Release your left hand from your knees. Knees come back up towards the ceiling. And now shift your hips over to the left side of the mat. Let your knees descend to the right. Use your right hand on your top knee to hug it in. Turn your gaze out over to the left and extend your left arm to the left. Inhale and exhale. And now bring the left side of your torso over to the right. Lay on the right side of your body in a fetal position and then push your left palm into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position, sitting in Sukhasana an easeful position with your right shin stacked in front of your left shin. 
If you have compression in your lower back, now is a good time to take one of your blocks and you can sit on top of it. Arms out to the side, fingertips on the ground. And then inhale, lift your arms up. And as you exhale, lower your right hand and arm down to the ground, come up onto your right fingertips. Inhale, elongate. You're gonna hear me say this frequently through our practice, through the left side of your torso to lift your left shoulder up and then start to walk your right fingertips over to the right side of the room. Imagine that that right hand is like a spider. Your fingertips are its legs. And then flatten your right palm and rotate your left arm over to the right and turn your gaze up to the left corner of the room. Push down into your sit bones. And inhale, stretching that left side of your body and exhale. Another inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, lift your right arm back up and exhale, lower your arms down. Inhale, arms up. We're gonna work on our second side. Exhale, this time lower your left arm and hand down towards the ground. Come up onto your left fingertips. Start to walk your left fingertips over to the left. Flatten your palm. Rotate your right arm over to the left. Turn your gaze up to the right. Root down into your sitting bones, which means keep both uh, cheeks of your tush planted onto the ground. And inhale, elongate through the right side of your torso from that right hip to your right shoulder. And then from your right shoulder, shooting out your right hand. Take two more cycles of breath. And then inhale, left arm comes back up and exhale, arms down. Pause for a moment. So practicing yoga, going through these poses, puts us at an intersection. And one path can lead us into the oys and the I can'ts and the I wish I could's, focusing your mind and energy on your limitations and on what you don't have. And the other road, the other avenue that we can select is instead to focus energy on what we do have. To let your observations be around the gifts of your body. Let's do another side body stretch. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, keeping your arms up in the air. Take your right hand, grab onto your left wrist, rotate that left wrist over to the right. And again, turn your gaze up to the left and make an observation. After your next exhale, inhale, return both arms up and then exhale, both arms come down. And second side, inhale, arms come up. This time, take your left hand, grab onto your right wrist, draw your right wrist over to the left, turn your gaze up to the right corner of the room, stretching through the right side of your torso. Gonna be here a few cycles of breath, slowing things down. In our practice today, we're gonna hold our poses 
a little bit longer than we typically do so that we can really stop and take time in each one of them to try to practice this art, this soul trait, Kistak Put Santosha, simplicity and satisfaction. With your next exhale, come back up to the center. Inhale and exhale both arms down. Let's pause for a moment. Put your hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Let your eyes close for a moment. And pause to take stock of the extent to which you have your needs in life met. If you were to make a checklist, a gratitude checklist, I feel like so many of us have been doing this throughout COVID. Which of your needs are met? The 11th century Spanish Jewish poet philosopher, Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gabriel wrote, Seek what you need and give up what you do not need. For in giving up what you do not need, you will learn what you really do need. I'm gonna share that again. Seek what you need and give up what you do not need. For in giving up what you do not need, you will learn what you really do need. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Let your eyes open. Put your hands on the ground in front of you. And start to walk your hands forward. Press your palms into the ground. Start to lower your forehead down towards the ground. And again, feel and notice the length in your side body. And like I said, we're gonna be holding our poses a little bit longer today. And so throughout the practice, I wanna share some strategies in the spirit of Santosha and finding contentment that can help you to find ease in your yoga practice. And the first strategy is that each time we hold a pose that's challenging, let's try to focus on our breathing and make the breath smooth and not only lengthen through your body, but extend your exhale. Lengthen that exhale. And now start to walk your hands over towards the right side of the room. Rotate your torso so that it's over your right thigh. And lower your torso down towards your right thigh. Lower your forehead back down towards the ground. Root down through your sitting bones, which means that's yoga for keep your tush on the ground. And just like in our previous poses, turn your attention to the length of the left side of your body, the side that you're stretching. Start to walk your hands back towards the center, pause, and then walk your hands this time over to the left. Rotate your torso so that it's over your left thigh. And now walk your right fingertips just a little bit more forward and a little bit further to the left. 
to increase the sensation in the right side of your torso. And focus on your breathing. Lengthen through the exhale. Walk your hands back in towards the center. And then walk your hands back in towards your shins. Lift your torso up. Hands return to your knees, palms facing up. And in doing my own learning in preparation for this yoga practice and our exploration of Histak Put and Santosha, this idea of simplicity, of contentment, one other quotation similar to Rabbi Shlomo Ibn Gabarol that really struck me. And it's the words of American German painter Hans Hoffmann, who said, the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. So not only are we using that exhale today as an opportunity to calm our body, to find contentment, but we also use the exhale as that vehicle towards letting go letting go of the distractions and the wants in order to focus on the needs. Come on to your hands and knees in a tabletop position, slipping a blanket or pillow underneath your knees if they're sensitive. You're in a tabletop. Let's flow through a few rounds of cat-cow. Inhale into cow. Reach your heart and chest forward, arch your back, lift your tush up, and exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Cat, inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Do that just a couple more times on your own. Part of our warm up, we always want to bring movement into our spine. It's like the headquarters of our body. And now come back into a tabletop position. Inhale, extend your right arm forward. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale, release your right hand down. Inhale, extend your left arm forward and exhale. Two more cycles of breath. Engage your core. And with your next exhale, release your left hand, bring your big toes to touch, widen your knees apart, shift your hips back onto your heels, come into balasana, into child's pose. Nestle your torso between your thighs and lower your forehead onto the ground. Our next side body stretch, lift your forehead up, start to walk your hands over to the right side of the room, lift your torso up and then drape your torso over your right thigh. So this is similar to when we were in Sukhasana, but you'll likely feel the sensation in your side body at a heightened degree, start to walk your left hand over to the right, walk it forward and to the right, walk it forward and to the right. Keep your tush pressed down towards your heels. And again, turn your attention towards the sensation in the left side of your body.
So part of our goal today, and one of the reasons why we're holding these poses is to face the challenge of finding Pistak Put and Santosha of contentment in the simplicity of each pose. What observation can you make about the gifts of your body, the gifts of being alive? Walk your hands back towards the center and then second side, keep walking your hands over to the left side of the room and then walk your right hand forward and to the left and forward and to the left, drape your torso over your left thigh and turn your attention to the right side of your body. Going to be here for several cycles of breath. And in teaching about the soul trait of simplicity of contentment, contemporary modern Musar scholar Alan Marinus shares the following. When you move yourself away from a life driven by desire for acquisition and cultivate contentment with what you have, you will inevitably find yourself living in the present. Walk your hands back towards the center, rest your forearms onto the ground, So one of the benefits of practicing contentment and simplifying life is the opportunity to be in the present. When we're focused on what we don't have or the next thing that we want, we're not here, we're not now. So again, use that exhale as a vehicle to release. Walk your hands forward, lift your forearms up, and then come onto your knees and step your right foot out, bend your right knee, have your, the heel of your right foot aligned with the knee of your left leg, and you want your right foot angled 90 degrees towards the right side of the room going to come into a gate pose. Take your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the center, and then inhale, lift your arms up. Start to extend your right leg to straight. Lower your right arm down to your right leg, and now lengthen through the left side of your body, from your left hip up through your left shoulder, reaching out through that left arm and then start to rotate that left arm over to the right side of the room. We're going to be here for several cycles of breath. Working on the side body. And you might start to experience a little bit of heat. So first and foremost, if the heat feels like pain, back off. But if the heat is generating the challenge of the pose or pushing your mind somewhere else, that's the challenge to lean into, to find contentment, satisfaction in this moment. Now inhale, lift your torso and arms up. Exhale, lower your hands to your hips. Bend your right knee. And now bring your right knee parallel with your left knee. Step your left foot out 90 degrees towards the left side of the room. 
The heel of your left foot is aligned with the knee of your right leg. With your hands on your hips, rotate your hips into the center. Inhale to lift your arms up. As you exhale, straighten your left leg towards the left side of the room. Come onto your left heel. Inhale, elongate through both sides of your torso. And then as you exhale, start to lower your left arm over your left leg. One more time to inhale and lengthen through the right side of your body. And then as you exhale, rotate your right hand over to the left, turn your gaze up to the right. We're back in this gate position. So the second strategy in our practice of yoga and in life to help us to find contentment, satisfaction, is to let go, to release ourselves of the idea of perfection. We're trying out all these wacky poses, twisting and turning and lengthening our bodies, releasing the idea of the model in the magazine or the yoga master in the book, accepting where we are right now is so key. One more inhale, exhale, bring your torso and arms up, bring your hands onto your hips, bend your left knee, lower your left knee back onto the ground, and then come into tabletop position. Tuck your toes, shift your, lift your knees and shift your hips up and back. Come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Root into your hands to rebound up through your arms, tracing that line of energy from your wrists up to your shoulders, from your shoulders through the length of your torso, shooting up from your hips towards the ceiling. And then turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, stretch your right leg up and back. Bend your right knee, bring your right knee into your chest and step your right foot forward. Lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. And then inhale, rise up, bring your Torso up, lift your arms up and exhale. Inhale, use your right hand to grab onto your left wrist and pull your left wrist over towards the right side of the room. Feel the stretching and lengthening of your left side of your body turn on again. Let's take three more cycles of breath. Release your left wrist, bring both arms up as you take another inhale and then exhale, return your hands down to frame your right foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, briefly passing through plank and then shift your hips up and back and return to downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back Exhale as you bend your left knee, draw your left knee into your chest and step your left foot through, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, inhale, lift your torso and arms up as you bend deeper into your left knee. And second side, take your left hand, grab onto your right wrist, rotate your right wrist over to the left, do you feel the length of the right side of your torso? Several cycles of breath.
and employ the two strategies that we've covered so far to find contentment here. The first is the breath. And the second is releasing the idea of perfection. One more cycle of breath. With your next inhale, lengthen up through both sides of your torso and lift your arms up as you release your your right wrist and then exhale, lower both hands down, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up and then step your left leg back in plank and immediately come back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up, exhale, bend your right knee, bring your right knee into your chest and step your right foot forward. Again, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes, and this time start to walk your left knee further back towards the back of the room. And if you have blocks or books available, now might be a good time to use them for a modification. And I am going to demonstrate what it looks like in my body to release the idea of perfection. Start to, as you inhale, straighten your right leg, come onto your right heel, lift your right toes up. And we're coming into a pose called Hanumanasana, which is basically the splits. And if your body is flexible enough, you might have your right leg forward and your left leg all the way back. For me, ain't gonna happen. So instead, my modification, my way of letting that go is to put my hands on the blocks. And for me, I'm gonna lift my torso all the way up. and practice acceptance that for me, straightening my right leg is an amazing achievement, even though my back leg is not straight and all the way towards the back of the room. And the stretch of my right hamstring is pretty intense. So using my own tip, I'm gonna focus on the exhale And my gosh, am I just grateful that this is a version of the pose that I can access. And if you don't have the blocks or the books, that's totally fine. You can have your torso coming forward and your fingertips or hands on the ground. I'm gonna be here another couple cycles of breath. Remembering that we are taking more time in our pose. I think often those of us who practice yoga with regularity are used to a more fast pace of our practice, going from one pose to the next, to the next, to the next. And for me, my mind starts to wander as I look forward or into the future of what that next pose is going to be without settling in to the benefit of the pose that is right now. Like one more inhale. Exhale, start to bend back into your right knee. Hands come back onto the ground to frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. Step your right leg back. Shift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward. Lower onto your right knee. Untuck your right toes and scoot your right knee back a bit. Those of you who are going for the full Hanumanasana, your right leg is going to extend all the way back. 
and then start to straighten your left leg. Come onto your left heel. If you're practicing the modification with the blocks or the books, place your hands underneath them, lift your torso all the way up. If you're not practicing with the blocks or the books or you want a different kind of stretch, not a problem. Just have your fingertips or hands on the ground. And we're gonna be here for several cycles of breath. And I wanna to speak to what may seem like a contradiction. On the one hand, in a yoga practice, we are urged to lean into poses, to press ourselves forward, to accept a little bit of the heat. And yet I'm also sending the signal of practicing contentment being okay where you're at. And yoga teacher Emma Newlin acknowledges that santosha or contentment doesn't mean idly sitting back and relinquishing the need to do anything. It simply means accepting and appreciating what we have and what we are already moving forward towards. It may be difficult to accept ourselves as we are if that means we can't do what we want to be able to do. Yet being just where we are now and moving forward from there is the key to a sustainable and transformative practice. When we push ourselves physically into an asana, into a pose we're just not ready for yet, our body responds by contracting, becoming rigid and almost defending itself against our incessant forcing. The more we work from a place of fear, attachment and pushing, the further away we push ourselves from where we're trying to go. So in other words, there's value in having goals. There's value in moving forward. Yet it's important to operate at a slow and steady intentional pace. And before we move on to the next thing, before we push too hard to first practice the soul trait of contentment in what we do have. One more inhale. And exhale, start to bend into your left knee. Place your palms onto the mat to frame your left foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back, hips up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Turn your gaze between your palms. Start to walk your feet forward until you find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. You can have a slight bend in your knees. This is our first Uttanasana. And then start to straighten your legs, hands on your hips. Keep your gaze on the ground as you lift your torso up one vertebra at a time. Come to stand in Tadasana in mountain pose. Walk towards the front of the mat, step your feet together, big toes touching, heels a couple of inches apart, arms are alongside your torso, root down through your feet, lift up through your kneecaps. And now inhale, arms up, and exhale, arms down. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Adding on a side body stretch. Inhale, arms up. Take your left hand, grab onto your right wrist, rotate that right wrist over to the left. 
Turn your gaze up to the right. Breathe. So you may start to see the pattern in these poses. We're essentially doing almost the same stretch, just from different angles and starting positions. And inhale, bring both arms back up towards the ceiling, parallel to each other. And exhale, let your arms descend down. Inhale, lift your arms up. This time, use your right hand to grab onto your left wrist. Pull your left wrist over to the side. Turn your gaze up to the right. And I think that part of this lesson in satisfaction and in the value of practicing the same poses, the same stretches from different perspectives, different angles and positions, is it's yet another reminder that we have so many tools at our fingertips. There's so many new ways we can explore a stretch without fancy equipment. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale to come back up to the center and exhale, release both arms back down. Great job. Step into the center of your mat the long way with your feet together, and then step your feet about four to five feet apart. Bring your arms out into a T position. Rotate your entire right leg towards the right side of the room. Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees and take a look to see that the heel of your right foot is aligned with the arch of your back foot. And now inhale, lengthen up through both sides of your torso and exhale, start to bend into your left, your right knee, your front knee. And then lower your right forearm onto the top of your right thigh and rotate your top arm all the way towards the front of the room. This is a modified side angle pose, modified Parsvo Konasana. We're gonna be here for several cycles of breath working on the length of the top side of your torso. And those of you who are ready and able to deepen the stretch, you can start to lower your right hand onto the ground outside of your right foot. You can place your hand on a block if you need to. rooting into your back foot. And then inhale, windmill your arms back up and straighten your right leg, hands on your hips and turn your right foot to be parallel with your left foot. Second side, if you're practicing with a block or a book, make sure you have one by your left foot. Rotate your entire left foot towards the left side of the room. Angle your back foot in about 45 degrees. Extend your arms out into a T position. And then start to bend into your left knee. Bring your left thigh towards parallel with the ground. Place your right, excuse me, your left forearm on top of your left thigh and then rotate your top arm towards the side of the room. 
and you're in this modified Parsvokonasana pose, modified side angle. Lengthen from your top hip to your top shoulder. And then from that top shoulder, shooting out through your top hand. If you want to deepen the stretch, you can lower your left hand outside of your left foot, either onto the floor or on a block. Three more cycles of breath. And as we're in this pose, another strategy for finding contentment is to let go of what you can't control. One more inhale and exhale, and then inhale to windmill your arms up and straighten your left leg, hands on your hips, rotate your left foot to be parallel with your right foot and step your feet together. And let's pause for a moment. So this idea of letting control, letting go of what we can't control. On the yoga mat, there's so many elements of our practice of the way that our bodies are built, the way that we got a night of sleep and how it affects our body or what we ate in the previous day or are ready today. That right now in this moment, we can't control. So part of this art of this soul trait of histak put, santosha, finding contentment is to let go of what we can't control and still be able to find the blessing in our circumstances. Step your feet out Again, about three and a half to four feet apart. Rotate your entire right leg towards the front of the room. Angle your back foot in 45 degrees. Again, you want heel to arch alignment. So the heel of your right foot is aligned with the arch of your back foot. Arms out in a T position. Inhale as you start to reach your right arm forward. Your hip goes towards the back of the room. And then lower your right hand onto your shin, your ankle or the ground. Lift your top arm up. For just a moment, we're in trikonasana in triangle pose. And we're gonna transform into an extended triangle pose, utita trikonasana. So rotate your top arm out towards the side of the room. Your palm faces towards the right edge of the mat. And as I've been cueing throughout the practice, turn your attention to your top hip. Trace that line of energy from your top hip to your top shoulder, shooting out your top hand. And one way to find stability, to find your sense of groundedness in this pose is to push down through all four sides of your back foot. It's one of two anchors in this pose. Your two feet are what is keeping you grounded. Those of you who wanna deepen the stretch, begin to lift your bottom arm parallel to your top arm. Gonna be here for just two more cycles of breath. And then lift both arms up, arms out into a T position, hands on your hips, rotate your right foot to be parallel with your left foot. And second side, rotate your entire left leg out towards the left side of the room. Angle your back foot in 45 degrees, heel to arch alignment. Extend your arms out into a T position. Inhale, start to reach your left arm 
towards the side of the room. Your hip goes towards the opposite side. And then lower your left hand onto your shin, your ankle, a block or the floor. And lift your top arm up. Triangle pose. Let's immediately transform this into an extended triangle pose. So rotate your top arm towards the left side of your mat. Five cycles of breath. Rooting down through all four sides of your feet. And then those of you who want to deepen the stretch, add your bottom arm, parallel it to the top arm. Two more cycles of breath. And then inhale to lift your torso and arms up. Arms out into a T position, hands on your hips, and rotate your left foot in and step your feet together. Great job. And pause for a moment in Tadasana. Let your eyes close. Claim a moment for Svadhyaya, for self reflection. There's a great mantra in the practice of yoga. May I be content and at ease no matter where life takes me. Let your breath return to your body. And then step towards the top of the mat. Standing again in Tadasana. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale to step your right leg back. Left leg to meet it. You're in plank or your knees are bent and on the ground in a modified plank. Shift your torso forward, bend your elbows, lower halfway down, roll over your toes, push yourself into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog, and then tuck your toes as you exhale, shift your hips up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. And then lower your knees onto the ground, bring your big toes to touch, shift your hips back and return to child's pose to Balasana. Forehead down. Lift your forehead and torso up. And we have arrived at our peak pose for the day, peak pose uh, that we've been preparing for. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it. We're going to be doing a couple versions of Vashistasana, which is a side plank pose. I know if you hear the word plank, that immediately might make your muscles tighten with a little bit of anxiety. And this is the part of the challenge to find contentment, to find the satisfaction in the version of plank that you can access. 
We're going to start with a modified version forearm plank. And I'm going to offer even another modification um, for those of you who need help accessing it. So let me demonstrate on one side of my body. Um, if you know what you're doing, you can already practice along, but I'll demonstrate it and then we'll do it together. So I'm going to start in a forearm plank position, which means my forearms are on the ground and my elbows are shoulder width apart. I'm going to rotate my right arm in and roll onto the outer edge of my right foot. And I'm going to stack my left foot on top of my right foot and put my left hand on my top hip. This is a forearm side plank. For a modification, I'm gonna use my top leg as a kickstand, which means to bend the top knee and plant my foot on the ground. This kickstand relieves the weight from my forearm. And then to stretch my side body, I'm gonna lift my top arm up and rotate that top arm towards the front of the room. This is an extended forearm vashistasana, extended forearm side plank pose. And then I'll come out of it, similar to how I came in, back into a forearm plank. Okay. Let's try it together. So start by coming into a forearm plank. And remember, if your arms or elbows are sensitive, you can slip a blanket or a towel or underneath it. And then rotate your right arm in about 45 degrees, angle it in, roll onto the outer edge of your right foot and stack your left foot on top of your right foot and bring your hand, your left hand onto your top hip. And already right away, if you know this is too much, use your top leg to make a kickstand. I'll continue doing it with the kickstand so you can see what we're doing. And then inhale to lift your top arm up and exhale, rotate that top arm towards the front of the room. Feel the stretch in your side body. Two more cycles of breath. And then top arm comes back up towards the ceiling. Remove the kickstand if you're practicing with one, and then top arm comes down, forearm comes down, and come back into a forearm plank. Second side, angle your left forearm in 45 degrees, rotate, rotate onto the outer edge of your left foot, and stack your right foot on top of your left foot. Turn the whole side body over to the edge of your mat, hand on your hip, and then arm, top arm comes up to the ceiling. You can bend your top knee and place your foot on the ground by your hips if you need that kickstand. And then rotate your top arm towards the front of the room. Three cycles of breath. Top arm comes up. And then your forearm returns to the ground. Come into your forearm plank. Lower your knees onto the ground. Untuck your feet. Bring your big toes to touch. Walk your hands back and come into child's pose. Take two or three cycles of breath. Three 
This is a challenging pose. So bringing all these pieces together that we've been practicing. This idea of contentment and satisfaction in both Judaism and in yoga doesn't mean abandoning goals or giving away everything, but it means creating space for each moment to be reflective, to practice gratitude, to release those ideas of perfection and to find the blessings in what you have. I'm gonna try another version of this, the traditional version. So you can stay in child's pose if you'd like, otherwise come back into plank, this time be on your hands and start to rotate onto the outer edge of your right foot Stack your left foot on top of your right foot. Bring your top arm up. You can again use that kickstand if you need it. It's a great tool to use. And then rotate your top arm towards the front of the room. So this is an extended side plank pose. Working that side body. Two more cycles of breath. Top arm goes up and top hand comes back down into plank position. Second side, start to rotate onto the outer edge of your left foot, stack your right foot on top of your left foot, press down into your left hand and bring your top arm up. Use the kickstand if you need it. And then extend your top arm towards the front of the room. Extended side plank pose. Two more cycles of breath. Inhale, top arm up. Bring your top hand down. Come back into plank position, lower your knees down, start to shift your hips towards your heels, and then bring your legs out in front of you. And it's time for our much deserved cool down. Inhale, lift your arms up, and exhale, fold forward, lower your hands to your shins, your ankles, or your feet. Settling in to Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. This is where you can use your strap if you have one. Let your heartbeat slow down. Keep in mind that mantra, may I be content and at ease no matter where life takes me. One more inhale. Exhale, release your hands, bring your torso back up, bend your knees, plant your feet onto the ground, reach your arms out in front of you, start to lower down onto your back, one vertebra at a time. Lift your shins up, reach your arms inside your legs, but grab onto the outer parts of your feet, come into child's pose and just rotate your hips from right to left and left to right.
And then release your right foot, extend your right leg out towards the front of the room, release your left foot, left leg extends towards the front of the room and return to Shavasana, a resting pose. Let your ankles roll open, palms face up towards the ceiling. And let the weight of your body melt into the ground. Return your mind and your attention to the inhale and the exhale. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. Start to walk, rock forward and back and forward and back, building up some momentum until you push yourself up into a seated position. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And if you'll bear with me for another minute or so, I wanna end with my own personal self-reflection. As some of you know, because I, I bring her up from time to time, I'm so fortunate and blessed to still have a grandmother who's alive, my maternal grandmother. And in the coming week, she is going to turn 97. It's unbelievable. And my rock star of a grandmother, as we have phone conversations and the occasional social distant visit, is so frequently reciting her own mantra of gratitude during this COVID time. She's a person who is so adventurous, even at the age of 97, has this ferocious appetite to go see movies, to go to the theater, to go out to lunch, to visit with family and friends, to go on a walk. And like with all of us, she's struggling during this time. And yet so frequently when I speak to her, she shares, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to live in a place where I have my meals. So lucky to have my health, that I haven't been infected with COVID. I'm so lucky to have people to talk on the phone to, to have kids and grandkids who are taking care of me. She is this beacon of satisfaction, of contentment. And in a recent phone conversation, as we were talking about her upcoming birthday, she has a son and a daughter. Her daughter is my mother. Her son lives in Northern California and she hasn't seen him frequently throughout COVID. And my uncle, her son, and my aunt have recently become vaccinated and they're going to be taking some trips to visit their own kids and grandkids. And my grandmother was expressing her sorrow that they're not going to be coming down to Los Angeles to visit her on her birthday. And right away, we were talking about how that's because they're going to see their grandkids. They haven't seen their grandkids in pretty much a year and they've seen 
my grandmother a couple of times throughout COVID. They recently got vaccinated and now is the time for them to take these trips. And my grandmother was on the one hand expressing her sorrow that she isn't going to see them, her disappointment, but on the other hand expressing her understanding that they are going to see their own grandkids and her delight that they have grandkids to visit. And my gut reaction was to say to her, I don't understand. I don't understand how you're not being entirely understanding. You wouldn't be disappointed if you were truly happy for them that they could embark on these trips and go to see their grandkids. And I realized as I was preparing for this morning that my grandmother in her own way in this conversation was practicing the art of yoga and was expressing her soul trait of histakput, of santosha, which again, doesn't mean releasing our goals, doesn't mean dropping things that we might want, but it's creating the space to find understanding and contentment in what we have. So was she disappointed that she wasn't going to see her own son on her birthday? Yes. Was she able to pivot? and find the joy that he was going to be visiting his own grandkids? Absolutely. So I'm gonna press my palms together. I encourage you to do the same and pay tribute to the yoga yogis that we know in our lives who are role models for histakput, for practicing contentment. Let your mind settle on someone that you know who is on their way to mastering that soul trait. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Thank you very much for being on this journey with me and with each other feeling a sense of connectedness during this time. Shabbat Shalom, Namaste.